Hey guys, it's Kevin again, my review for the latest Netflix miniseries, of course, being Unbelievable. And what Unbelievable is essentially about is we center on this character of Marie. She is someone who has been uh, sexually assaulted, and you can see the visceral impact it's had on her. Unfortunately, though, when speaking to the police, they are not able to obtain the necessary information, so they basically force her to lie under oath, and basically after this, we see how this uh, very much ruins her reputation, but also see her hopefully trying to get that justice to prove that what happened to her was actually true and that there is a rapist out there. Meanwhile, we follow these two police detectives who are trying to also catch a serial rapist, and that's all I'm going to say. So, unbelievable overall, I was very interested in this show. This seemed like it was going to be something that was definitely very hard to watch, but also something that was very gripping, something that I think was very, impor is very important to watch for sure, especially in the days of the Me Too movement and things like that, when accusations are just at an all-time high, a show like this is very important to watch just to see what can happen when you know, people are denied and things like that. It had such an amazing cast behind it. The concept itself, I mean, this did actually happen as well, which is shocking to me, but it did actually happen. Um, and everything about it just seemed like it could be a really powerful show for sure, and indeed it was. Unbelievable is easily one of the best shows of the entire year. It's a different show than I was expecting for sure, and I'll get into that, but it definitely is one of the most effective, and I think a must-watch for all. But we're just getting to right now, starting off with the cast easily one of the biggest draws, I think, going into the show is its cast. I mean, everyone here is so stellar. Everyone does a fantastic job. But let's first talk about the combined effort of Tony Collette and Merritt Weaver. These two are very well-known actresses. They're very well-respected, and they really do play to their strengths here. Tony Collette is a bit more restrained than you would expect her to be, especially compared to Hereditary, but she definitely does do a really good job as this cop that is really destined to get answers, but it really is Merritt Weaver of the two that very much does stick out. She is someone who is no nonsense. She is destined to get to the bottom of things. She wants answers pronto, and she will not rest until justice is served, and she does such a fantastic job in this show. The chemistry between these two is off the charts. They work very well together. They also have a really nice, I think, um, you know, uh, report to them for sure. I definitely really did enjoy their relationship here. I think they did a really good job in this show. They really do anchor it quite nicely and definitely one of the best things about it for sure. However, surprisingly, neither of them are the standout in this show. The big standout, without a doubt, is Caitlin Deaver, who, look, I've seen her in many things before, Beautiful Boy, um, you know, going all the way back is like Last Man Standing, uh, All Summer Long last year, Book Smart earlier this year, um, but this is easily the best work I have ever seen from her. I mean, she just puts 110% into this role, completely transforming into this character of a woman who has been assaulted, and you really do see the effect that this has on her, but also you see the anguish that this has on her. I mean, she really loses everything. She loses a sense of hope. She loses a sense of really anything. Wanting a chance, you know, she loses a sense of, you know, purpose in that way. And it's just devastating to watch her crumble, but Deaver plays this role in a very sensitive but a very effective manner for sure. There are so many scenes where she doesn't even have uh, dialogue, but she really does stick out in terms of her facial expressions and things like that. And I just think she completely killed it in the show. It's easily the best performance her entire career. It's going to be hard for her to top for sure, uh, but it's definitely one of the best I have seen all year. I think she was just absolutely phenomenal here. She better get some Emmy love next year. Oh my god, she better. I think that she absolutely just killed it in this series, and definitely for me, probably maybe the best thing about the entire show. I mean, there's a lot to really love about it, but Deaver's acting might just be the best thing here, because I thought she was absolutely phenomenal here. 
The rest of the cast also does do a really good job. Dale Dickey, I really did like as this woman that works with Colette and Weaver and is really trying to help them get to the bottom of things. Danielle McDonald is really good as another woman that has been, um, that, that has uh, become a, uh, a survivor and things like that, and I think she did a really good job here. Elizabeth Marvel was really great as uh, as uh, Marie's uh, mother, or one of her foster mothers. I thought she definitely did a really good job. Eric Lang might just be the best I've ever seen him. I didn't even recognize him in this show. I'm so used to him having like the Psychowitz type haircut, so to actually see him not look like that was actually really cool, and it might just be the best role he's ever played, especially towards the end this uh, season. I think he did a phenomenal job for sure. Austin Hebert's really great. I mean, really everyone kills it in the show. I can't really think of a weak link here. I think really everyone just killed it in terms of acting, and that's definitely one of the best things about it for sure. So now let's get to the directing and the writing, because that's the thing when it comes to this show. There's been so many shows lately about sexual assault and about people that are raped. You know, what is this show really going to do differently? Well, the thing about the directing is just how real it really does feel. Nothing about this show feels like one, and that's what I think is so great about it. There's something that feels just so raw and realistic about it, and it's mainly because this did actually happen. In 2008, there were a ton of rapes that were going on. The first one was actually denied, and then there were more that went on in the coming years, and you really do see the effect of that here. This is a very gripping and definitely a very hard watch. It's purposefully uncomfortable, and for some it might be a little, it might hit a little too close to home. If anyone's had any sort of experience with this kind of stuff, it might be very hard to watch, but I appreciate the fact that the show definitely went there, and I think that that tone is very well handled throughout the entire show, but there is just the tiniest dash of hope. There's hope that these two cops are going to track down the serial rapist, that they're going to make sure that justice is served when it needs to be, and I think they did a really good job with that, and I really did like the feel of the show. Like I said, it just feels very grounded in that way. Nothing about it really feels like a TV show, and that's when you know you're watching something truly great, is when you can watch it and you're like, this just feels like people talking. This just feels like a real situation, and that's because it did actually happen. I think they did a great job pulling that off here. Uh, all of the careers of the show, you can tell the passion that was really poured into this. It's all uh, female, it's all helmed by uh, females as well, which I think is absolutely the right thing for this kind of show. And I think in general, they all just did such an incredible job. But the writing is really what stuck out to me, because going into this show, you're going to expect it to be a certain story. And is it about Marie getting, you know, uh, having to prove to these cops that, like, she, you know, what actually happened to her and seeing the effect of that? Yes, but that's only one of the stories we're dealing with here. That's more of a subplot, if anything. The main plot actually doesn't really deal with Marie. It's about these two cops trying to go after this serial rapist because he is doing it again, you know, all of these things are starting to occur, it's starting to multiply in that way, there's many women that have been uh, assaulted, and basically they are trying to get to the bottom of things, but then we also cut back to seeing Marie and the lack of progression in her timeline. It makes for a much more effective watch altogether, because you see that these cops are trying to get, you know, justice done where the cops in Marie's, um, you know, timeline in 2008, they couldn't do that. They couldn't get done what these two cops are trying to do. So it actually makes for a very effective watch in that way, where you just see the juxtaposition there. On one side of things, you have two cops that know that what they're doing is, you know, they know exactly what they're doing. They know who they're tracking down. They know what to do here. They're trying to get all the answers. But then you have Marie, who just, her life just keeps getting destroyed more and more as the show goes on. She loses her job. Her family starts to uh, lose faith in her. You know, her friends, she starts to gain this reputation that she's just a liar and things like that. People start to think that she has a mental illness. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we really do double down on there. And I will say, her plotline is my favorite part of the show because you really do get to see how this affects her and how it really does destroy her life in that way, which I mean, it is completely destroyed. Um, 
And it's just, it's very uh, infuriating to see what the cop's uh, response is, the way that they treat her. But it's also very devastating to watch because you know what Marie actually did go through. And I think they did a really good job with that. And I was worried because of how invested I was in Marie's story, because most of it, the first episode actually is just Marie's story. It is seeing what she's gone through. It is seeing her trying to confess, but the cops not believing her, and then her having to basically um, comply to lying in that way, and then basically forcing her to say that she made this all up, which is we know absolute is absolute bullshit from the start. And I thought because of how much care I had with that. That story that I wasn't going to care as much when it came to the two cops, but I really did, mainly because they do a really good job at presenting who these two characters are. These two are very destined to get justice, but they approach it in very different ways. Colette is far more passive. She's someone who, you know, her character... Yes, she wants to see this done, but you're not sure if it affects her as much. Whereas Weaver is the complete opposite. She is so adamant on making sure that justice is served. There's an episode very early on, I think it's episode 3 or 4, where she's just like... She's just harping on the fact that, like, they need to get this done, that the um, the people that are working there are not putting the effort that they need to into this, and you really just see how this affects her, and it really makes for a great watch, because you're seeing these two deal with this situation in a completely different manner, and I definitely really did love seeing that for sure, and it kind of becomes a buddy cop show in that way and because of that you really do get invested into these two that when it cuts back to marie or when it cuts back to them you don't really care because you're invested in you know you you don't really mind it because you're invested in both stories and really at the end of the day it does eventually converge i'm not going to spoil how it converges um eventually but I do think that they did a really good job with keeping these two stories apart, so once they do come together, it makes a lot more sense. I think some people might have a problem with the fact that they keep them separate for a large part of the show, but for me, it actually made for a more effective experience, and I think that because we spend just as much time with Marie that we do with the cops, um, it overall just makes for a really great story altogether and one that I think is very well told and that the show really does hone in on some very important themes obviously the theme of denial the theme that we are very easy to deny someone we don't want to believe what they actually went through we don't actually want to put in the effort to help this individual so we just want to create this narrative that they were lying and also the theme of regret, of course, but it really is about empathy. I mean, when Marie um, is raped, no one is really there for her. There are a few people here and there that are, but it takes a while for someone to genuinely feel bad for her and generally want to do something uh, other than just saying that they feel bad on a surface level. It takes a while for that to happen to her. And when it comes to these cops, these two are very empathetic. They really do want to help Marie in that way. And you definitely do see that throughout the show. And I think they did a really great job with that here overall of really just making sure that theme resided over the entire show. And I think it just made for a very, uh, satisfying experience altogether. And the characters of Karen Duvall and Grace Ross Mawson on their own take away the whole rape storyline are also very interesting. They're the best scene in the show, in fact, uh, besides a scene in the finale, is this scene of these two just in a car and talking about the differences between them, but not about how they this hurts them. No, more about how they embrace it and how it actually helps their, um, it actually strengthens their bond in that way. And I, I really did enjoy that for sure. There's a lot of stuff they get into in this conversation, but again, it, it's the definition of just compelling television. You know you're working with a great show when you can make like a 10 minute conversation in a car that is almost completely unrelated to what's going on. Uh, so interesting and just have me so invested and they really did a great job with that here. The cinematography here, though, is fantastic. It really does put you into 2008 and 2011 quite well. The show is kind of, like, shot in grayscale, kind of. It has this very, like, gray hue across the whole thing. Except when characters are on the beach. The beach kind of is this symbolism for the happiness in Marie's life. And 
I think that was actually a really good choice, because by shooting the show in grayscale, it gives you the sense of despair. It gives you the sense of, um, you know, it, it gives you this sense of um, just, again, th th this, this, this sense of sadness in that way, and I think they do a really good job with that here. And again, the beach kind of is the only time where Marie generally feels at peace in that way, and it's one of the only parts of the show that isn't in grayscale. And I, I think that's something that not a lot of people are going to pick up on, but definitely I noticed it, and I think it really did work for what they were trying to go for in this show. I thought that was very effective overall, and I, I really did enjoy the cinematography here. Uh, the score is really good. Not a ton to say about it, but it definitely is a very effective score for sure. And the editing, I think the show was very well paced for the most part. There are some pacing issues here and there, but for the most part, I think it, it definitely was uh, a very riveting show. I think eight episodes was definitely the right amount, and I don't think there was anything in here that got shortchanged or anything like that. Overall, I was pretty satisfied by the pacing here. Now, I really do want to get into some spoilers here because it's hard to talk about the things I really adore about the show without getting into them so we're just gonna dive into it right now so i'm not gonna get into a lot here obviously uh because a lot of this show you're watching these two cops they're trying to track down the serial rapist but you're also watching like i said marie deteriorate in that way and you're wondering how this all does connect and i knew eventually it was going to connect um and basically the way things connect is we realize that this serial rapist, uh, Marie, was one of this rapist's victims in that way. And this gets Grace and Karen to realize, holy shit, this charge was dropped and that this was something that is very serious and should have been taken into effect. And when Karen calls up uh, Eric Lang's character, uh, it, I thought it was a very effective moment for sure. I love the moment where you see this guy that was basically just a complete dick to Marie, didn't want to give her any sort of... Um, care whatsoever and even though he said like you're a good person he didn't try to help her in any way he just accepted the fact that like oh she was lying and he just lived with it for like two years and this moment that he realizes that he fucked up here you can see how this has been eating away at him and him wanting to go to her and apologize but obviously she's not in the mood for an apology you know he kind of had a, a chance to apologize and she's not in the mood for it but i like the fact that like he tried to finally help her it was too late for sure he definitely should have done that to begin with and he shouldn't have just dismissed her um you know her whole story um but you see that he knows the he's seen the error of his ways and i think that was definitely a very effective moment for sure and i think they did a really good job with that but you also do see how Marie is starting, this finally gets Marie to be at peace in that way, knowing that the serial rapist is caught, knowing that these cops did something that she needed them to do. They helped her out, and they didn't even know that they were doing that, and... I think that's a very effective moment for sure, because they inadvertently turned her whole life back around. I mean, it was basically at rock bottom. She had lost her job. You know, people were starting to think that she was just self-destructive in that way. They thought she had a mental illness. They didn't want to be around her. Hell, even one of her, you know, foster moms wasn't believing her. It took this whole video for her to finally believe her. And so to finally have someone actually be there for Marie and actually help her in that way and make sure that something gets done um, is a really effective moment. And I love that, you know, Marie finally learns to drive and things like that. This gets her to finally move away from Colorado because, you know, that's where all these rapes were happening and things like that. But that final conversation that she has with Karen, I it almost got me pretty teary-eyed, I'm not going to lie, where she tells her that, like, you know, all I needed was for someone to help me. Um, I thought it was just such an effective moment in that way. It, that really, that scene alone, I think, should be... Well, that or the scene where she is admitting to the therapist that her rape did, in fact, happen, and she actually does open up to her about it. It's the first time that she admits to someone that, like, no, the cops made her lie. This all very much did happen. She's just been keeping it inside all this time. Um, 
Either that or the phone call scene, I think, should be the scene they submit for uh, Deaver's uh, Emmy here, because I, I think she absolutely kills it in this scene. But again, I love the fact that at the end of the day, these two ended up helping her. These two made a change in a life that they didn't even know that they were doing. And it just makes for a really satisfying end overall when she, you know, when Karen talks to Grace and she's like, I got a call today and we helped her out. Uh, and you see how much this has helped uh, Karen, how much it has impacted her in that way. You know, she was so... She, she was so set on making sure that this guy was caught, and he was, and she can finally be at peace with that, and Marie also can be at peace, and it gives us a surprisingly very hopeful ending, and this is a very dark show, but the fact that we have this hopeful ending, it's a great way of showing that, like, not everything needs to end in despair. All you need to do is try to attempt to help someone. Try to make an effort, even if it seems impossible. Try to make that effort. Try to make sure that you, you know, one person can make a whole difference in someone's life. And we very much do see that here. And Karen and Grace, again, they weren't directly involved with what was going on Marie, but just by them trying to make sure that justice was served and that these guys were caught, um, that alone was enough for Marie to realize that they that they were trying to help her in that way, and they really did change things for the better. And I think it just makes for a very impactful message overall, and it just, it really makes the show, um, you know, that much more impactful. Because, you know, sure, it does a really good job of examining someone who was uh, denied any sort of clarity in that way. But then you really get into the main message, which, like I said, it's all about empathy. It's all about caring for people. It's all about wanting to help them. And that's what Karen and Grace did. They stopped at nothing to help these people, you know, juxtaposed to these cops that just didn't want to do anything because it was hard. Whereas Karen and Grace actually did. And you really do see the progression there. And it really did change Marie's life for the better in that way. And it's really just great to see. And you hope that that does happen. You hope that this does end up happening in real life. I don't know what happened to the girl in 20, in 2008 that was that supposedly cried rape, which we know she absolutely didn't. Um, I don't know if the same conclusion happened for her, but you want to believe it did. You want to believe that she's able to move on from this and you know, just like Marie was able to move on from this. And like I said, it just overall made for a very satisfying experience overall. So overall, Unbelievable is a highly effective and I think a very impactful watch for sure. It's a show that really everyone I think needs to see at some point in their life for sure. Um, it's anchored by its three lead performances, but especially Caitlin Deaver, who really has never been better before. Uh, it tells a story that at first may seem disconnected, but really does connect in a real beautiful way. And like I said, it really at the end of the day is that great story about empathy, and I think that's something that all of us really do need to relate to. It's not just about a bunch of sexual assaults. It really is trying to drive at a much more uh, stronger uh, point. It really is trying to drive at something a lot more impactful in that way. And I think they overall did a really great job with that. I think the show accomplished something really great. I think it's a show that is going to go under people's radar, but it absolutely should not because it is Definitely very well told. Like I said, it's anchored by its three performances. It tells a very hard story, but one that is definitely very important. And overall, I think it's definitely one of the best shows of the entire year. And I'm definitely going to give Unbelievable overall in A. So over, guys, in my review of Unbelievable, let me know what you guys saw the show overall. Lift your thoughts in it. We'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.